Uh, but let's go back to that that game because again, it's a tight game. It's three three in the third period, about halfway through. You just come onto the ice, take it from there, and tell us about what became the the game winning goal. Well, it's it's a play that came kind of out of nowhere. Actually, if if you look back, it, it's the almost the exact same spot that I scored against the Soviets when we lost ten to three. Matter of fact, I think it's in the in the exact same spot. In but Madison you know, Square I came Garden, over the, right? At Madison Square Garden. So, you know, it's a, you know, hockey's a game of reaction. Things happen, plays happen, and you know, the, the I, I, Buzzy Schneider came off, and I was up next. So, Pavlich and Harrington were still on the ice. They were in Buzzy's line, and I remember coming over the red line, coming into the zone, and the puck went in the corner, and, and John Harrington did a great job of getting the puck and beat the Soviet player to the puck, and he chipped it up the boards to Mark Pavlich, and Pav got there the same time as the Soviet player did. And he kind of saw, saw me coming across the blue line and he kind of deflected the puck over to me and the puck came to me. <coughs> and it's amazing how many things can go through your mind in a short period of time. And I thought if the defenseman stayed, I was going to use him as a screen uh, and shoot. If he came at me, I saw Harrington and um, uh, Davy Christian to my left kind of going towards the net and Billy Baker. And he stayed, I shot and, I'll actually be honest with you. When it left my stick, I thought it was in. Uh, but I didn't see it going because of the defenseman in front of me. And the only thing I thought of was that I pulled it because I was going across my body. I thought I might have pulled it a little. And I, when I saw the replay, you know, later, I did pull it a little, and but enough to get under his, under his blocker. And I didn't know what went in until I saw the people behind the net jump up in the air. And then I realized that, uh, you know, it went in and we had the lead. But you know, I've said many times, uh, you know, if, if, first of all, if it wasn't for Mark Johnson, we don't win the game anyway. Uh, Mark was so important and scored all the big goals. And, you know, I think that's what made our victory so so unique was everybody did something and contributed at some point. Whether it was Jimmy making big saves, was Mark scoring every big goal that we needed. Uh, our team defense, Kenny Morrow, was spectacular. Um, we played four lines. You know, we didn't just play one, two, three, four, and then one, two, or one, two, three. We outscored our opponents, and this is an, an amazing statistic, and I didn't know this until maybe about a year ago. We outscored our opponents 17 to three in the third period. Wow. That's an unbelievable statistic. Uh, and that shows all the skating and all the conditioning and all the method to my madness for Brooks uh, paid off. So, you know, I was fortunate to give us the lead. And, um, and we continued to play well in the last 10 minutes. And, you know, I, I haven't seen the movie in a long, long time. But in the movie, it's like, you know, the Soviets had 100 shots in the last 10 minutes. And I've only seen the game twice. And I saw it a few years ago. And in the third period, I think the Soviets only had five or after I scored, I think they only had five or maybe six shots on goal the rest of the way. So we, we shut them down pretty good at the end. You only watched that game twice? Yeah. Since yeah. Really? Well, I know the outcome. <laughs> and I, I laugh about it. I say, I don't want to be sitting at home watching the, the Soviet game and one of my buddies shows up. You know, like let it, you know, let it go. It's over. You know? <laughs> but I, I think with the grandkids at some point, uh, if I can get somebody to change the tape from a VHS tape to a, a CD, maybe I'll watch it with them. Well, again, you score what would be the winning goal, but there were still 10 minutes left. What were those 10 minutes like? <laughs> it was pretty long. Uh, but, you know, again, it was just keep continuing. You know, you see it more in the movie. Uh, Herb kept saying, play your game, play your game. And, and that's what the mindset was. Just continue to do the things that we were doing throughout the Olympic Games. Don't change because you have a lead. Don't do anything differently. Continue to do what made us successful and you know yeah it was a long 10 minutes but the clock eventually wound down and uh we ended up winning you mentioned the the fanfare afterwards was it you know the the non-us fans was everybody against the soviet at that the soviets at that time was, was, did that heighten the fandom that you guys it, you know it received was, it, it was deafening in the building um you know it's funny when you're on the bench you could hear the usa usa chants but when you're on the ice, you didn't hear anything. You heard a, a teammate asking for a pass or heard whistling for a line change. Uh, uh, and even on the bench, you, you you still heard some of the chants, but never near as loud as it was from what people told me because 
you're so focused at the task at hand. It's, it's again, it, it's amazing what your mind can block out um, when you're focused on what you're doing. So, you know, you're watching what's going on. You're, you're waiting for your next shift to come up and, you know, waiting for the guy in front of you, Robbie McClanahan in my case. And, you know, Robbie's coming over the boards. It's my job to go over after him. And, you know, we, we would play, you know, four lines in, in maybe a minute and 15 or a minute and 20 seconds. Sometimes you'd be out in the ice for 10 or 12 seconds and they'd change and somebody else would be jumping over the board. So it, it was really like you were in a, not a fog, but you were kind of just so focused on what was going on at the time that you, you weren't so clued to what was happening in the stands behind you or around you. The game wasn't broadcast live, but that broadcast kind of elevated Al Michaels as well. The, the fans were counting down. He kind of tied into that, was counting down, and, and and he had the line. Do you believe in miracles? Yes. I mean, when was the first time you watched that? And, and you know, I just watched it the other day, getting ready for this, and it gave me chills now. Did, did that do that for you when you watched it the first time? I, I didn't see it for quite a while uh, because – I didn't watch the game with my teammates, so I heard about the call, but I didn't see it. It might have been weeks uh, later that I saw, that I actually saw it. Um, and, you know, I got to know Al, and, and Al calls himself our team mascot. Uh, <laughs> and we have some team events once in a while, and we try to get Al to come to it, and he has a sh shown up at a couple of things. And I've played golf with Al over the years, and I remember every time we play golf, we're walking up the fairway, and it's just a matter of seconds before somebody will yell out, hey, Al, Mike, do you believe in miracles? Yes. And Al will look at me and I go, I knew it was happening. It just didn't know how long it was going to take. So, you know, Al's, it was a great call. Uh, you know, I, I don't believe it was a miracle. I, you know, we, we see miracles uh, with, with our doctors and, um, you know, what they're able to do and the lives that people are saving. Th those are miracles. It was a hockey game that was a, an incredible, incredible victory. But uh, it, it was a catchy phrase. I mean, that said, in your mind, is it the best moment in American sports, do you think? Um, with due respect to everyone else, yeah. And, and I say that not for, for, for us in collectively, but what it meant to a nation. Um, you know, we could use a 1980 right now. Maybe our soccer team will do something and, and create that excitement that they've already generated. But, you know, when it when it's when it's the Olympic Games, it's a nation that watches you compete. It's not... Boston or Chicago or Detroit or New York. You know, we, every year there's a Super Bowl and, you know, there's one winner from one city and another city loses and the other cities don't care because they're not playing in it. Uh, so I think our, our moment touched the lives of a country that was looking for something to feel good about. Um, you know, what had happened with the hostages, what had happened with the uh, gas lines, inflation. Um, you know, it was, we, we, were, we were struggling as a country to, to feel good about ourselves. And, you know, we didn't know it at the time until after the Olympic games, we realized that this thing was, was greater than that. And there aren't many sporting events that touch the, the lives of so many people in this country, like that moment did. And again, I don't say it to pat ourselves in the back. Uh, I say it because that's what makes this country so great is that moments like that capture the spirit of our country. It captured the, the work ethic, uh, what makes this country so great. And, um, and that's what our team was, you know. Uh, Herb called us a lunch pail, hard hat group of guys, and and that's what we were. Uh, many of us came from working class families uh, that had great values about hard work and dedication. Um, you know, my dad was a Marine, so I knew how important it was to represent your country. So I think that's what made our moment so special and so different than other sporting events. And like I said, I'm I'm waiting for another one to happen. I hope it does. I think it would be something that would be great. Uh, to, to rally everybody around. Well, I know you're you're somewhat responsible for one victory, and that's the the Red Sox over the Yankees in 2004. We had Trot Nixon on our show, and he said that in 2004 they were down 3-0. They watched the movie Miracle, and then you came into the the clubhouse, right? I I my dad who passed away a while ago was a fanatical Red Sox fan, and they were down. I think it was 3-1. And I got a call from the Red Sox to bring the ball out to start to, to, to the game, to bring the ball. To, so I'm in the dugout. And first of all, I'm a fanatical Red Sox fan and, and baseball guy. I played in Fenway when I was a kid. And they had highlights of 1980. And it said, if it happened then, it can happen again. 
please welcome Mike Ruzioni. And I come out of the dugout and I put the ball on the mound. And I believe Pedro pitched that game and they won. And I went home and I got 40 copies of the movie Miracle and brought them in the locker room to give to the team and to, for them to watch. And they went on and won the World Series. And my dad, to this, till, till he passed, Always said, if it wasn't for me, the Red Sox never would have won the, the World Series. So uh, if you talk to Trot Nixon, tell him thanks for remembering that moment because it, it was one of my highlights uh, uh, after, after the Olympic Games uh, to be a part of, not a part of it, but, a, you know, some a silly silly story about it. But yeah, Red Sox fans look at you in a whole different light than the, the rest of the country from <laughs> 1980. 2004 was more important to them for sure.